Black Narcissus by Ruma Godden. Dramatized for radio by April De Angelis. The house will be empty now. Silent except for the creaking and straining in the wind. Aya can bawl as loudly as she wants from the kitchen and enter any room without knocking. There will be no one there to reprimand her. It's a bad house. It has a bad, wild life of its own. It's a rotten place to build a nunnery. Mopu. <laughs> I'll give you till the rains break. I feel I must write you the whole sad story, Reverend Mother, leaving nothing out. Was it just a year ago we came? Are we nearly there, Sister Clodagh? Best to be patient, Sister Honey. These hills are so lovely. Father Robert seemed quite anxious about us. Seemed to think we'd be lonely. Lonely? When we're all together? How could we be? Horses, Sister Clodagh. They look like the general's men. He must have sent them to welcome us. Some welcome. We'll take tea in the shade and then on to St. Faith's. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sister Philippa, Sister Bryony, Sister Honey. Why Sister Honey? You'll need her. She's popular. You'll need to be popular. Sister Ruth? Why Sister Ruth? She resents being given a junior teacher's work. She thinks she's cleverer than that. She's a problem. She hasn't been well. I think in a cooler climate and a smaller community... She'll be better. She always wants to be important. Spare her some of your own importance, if you can. You tend to think of yourself as superior to the other sisters. Mother Dorothea, are you sorry that I've been appointed to take charge of St. Faith's? Yes. I don't think you're ready for it. And I think you'll be too lonely. Why should I be lonely? It'll be the same for me as for the others. Sisters! The mountains! Oh. Kanchenjunga! It rises right into the clouds! Dazzling! We'll have to look across the valley at it every day. We're almost there. The house is tucked into the hillside. Mr. Dean will be there to show us round. Is Mr. Dean a policeman? No, he's the general's agent. He's nothing like a policeman. You've met him before? On my first trip here. That was the first time I met Mr. Dean. Sitting on his veranda. Quiet, boy. He looked like a native. He was drinking whiskey. Hello. You must be Mr. Dean. I must. You need a hand? No, thank you. I think I can manage to dismount from a horse by myself. So I see. What curious feathers in your hat. I never saw such a collection. Are they from birds you've shot yourself? I don't shoot birds. I find killing starts to pall after a bit. These are feathers I pick up as the birds drop them down. That was from the throat of a golden oriole. Really? No. We don't have orioles here. It was from the general's canary. I just said it to please you. I've come to see you on business, Mr Dean. Um, the order intends to open a hospital and a school for girls. A school for girls? That's good. You'll be doing me a great favour if you can begin to educate the local ladies. I've been warned already, Mr Dean, that you don't believe in solitude. This is no place to put a nunnery. It's an impossible place. Difficult, but not impossible, Mr Dean. Nothing is impossible with God. I give you till the break of the next rains. I like to hear that bell. <laughs> I like to see it up there on the mountain's edge, carved out against the sky. That is progress, isn't it, Sister Clodagh? Mm. I am a great believer in progress. I hope you will make progress with this house. <laughs> this house is not good at all. I could never stay in it. My father, General Ranajit, used to allow some bad goings on. He kept his women here. 
There would be light shining till all hours of the night and music playing. It was a great disappointment to me that the religious brothers who came before you uh, felt they could not change the house and uh, left us. But you, I am certain, will make the house good. Well, General, we shall try. There are one or two things that need to be done. Plumbing... I shall send Mr. Din. Excellency, if you would send us the workmen, we can see that they carry out the work ourselves. As you like. I believe in progress, Sister Clodagh. I call a hospital progress, don't you? I have given orders for all the women and children to attend. If they are ill. Ill or well, they will attend. And the children will attend school at once. But, Excellency, we're not ready for them. We hardly know the dialect. They can come and look. It will do them good. And there's always Joseph Antony, the son of the cook. He was at school a short while here. He will interpret for you. He speaks English as well as I do. Ah, it is a very great happiness to have you here, sisters. I brought you the cook's son. The general said you might need him. What for, though? He doesn't know anything. He knows English, Aya. The brothers taught him. But the brothers went away. He left forgotten everything the brothers told him. We all have. When I heard there were ladies coming back to the house, I was overjoyed. I thought it will be like old times. It will be nothing like old times. I know that. You're the wrong sort of lady. You're Joseph Antony. Yes, lady. She isn't a lady. She is a sister. Say yes, Lamini. Thank you, Aya. Yes, Lamini. I have come to help you teach the children. And I have my box and my bedding outside because I shall live here with you. And how old are you? Six to eleven. What? I can remember that I'm six, but my father married my mother eleven years ago, so that I may probably be about ten. Later, I will take you to Sister Bryony, and she'll arrange where you can sleep. The fat Lamini, who asks a lot of questions? Yes, Sister Bryony. You must learn to tell our names, Aya. Yes, Lamini. Mr. Philippa? I passed the schoolroom just now. I think Sister Ruth may be having a little trouble. I'll go and see her. Thank you, Sister. You can come with me, Joseph. What's all this, sister? I don't know what to do with them. We have nothing unpacked. There are too many of them and they smell. Shall I tell them what you said? No, you stupid little boy. I was just passing her. I was wondering if I could help at all. Haven't you other tasks, Sister Honey? Not pressing ones. It's not fair to give me so many of them and nothing for them to do. Gently, sister. That's not the way to speak to me. It certainly seems to be a very large class. You must start with a few of the older ones. Joseph here has come to help us. He can tell them that we'll keep the ten oldest ones and the others may run away. They won't go. Well, tell them they must. But they were paid to come in, so they can't go away. Paid? Who pays them? The general gave orders to pay every child who comes to school, so they all want to come. Well, excuse me, sister. Yes, sister honey? Wouldn't it be a pity to send them away when they've come? If they like it, maybe they'll come again of their own free will. I think I could amuse them for an hour. What could you do with them? They look very stupid to me. Remember, they don't speak English or Hindustani. Joseph can. You could help me, couldn't you, Joseph? Certainly, Amini. There's a blackboard. I'll draw things in coloured chalk and they can tell me the name for it. And I'll teach them the English for it. You can't call that a lesson. You can call it a very sensible idea. Thank you, Sister Honey. I'll leave you to deal with it. Sister Ruth, you'd better keep order in the lace-making school, if you can. Oh. Ha! Snakefish Lamini. Come along now, Joseph. Let's start. We were hardly ourselves from the first. There was so much to be done, and it was hard to live so high up in that strange, clear air. Our faces looked yellow. We were listless. Sister Ruth had headaches, and then we all got sick one by one, stomach pains and diarrhoea. There seemed no choice but to call in Mr Dean. You didn't want to call me here, did you? But it's true, you've got a reputation. Uh, but the plumbing, Mr Dean, it must be made to work. We've been sick. We have no beer, Mr Dean. 
Perhaps you'd like a coffee? Could you see to that, Sister Briney? I don't trust anyone to make my coffee except myself. Oh! All these good cupboards standing empty because they have no hinges or the locks are broken. And the man-father Robert sent us is no use at all. I'll send you Pin Fong, the carpenter from the factory. He'll work the men for you and he won't cheat you. We want to build a workroom and a school. Oh, and Mr. Dean, Joseph tells us that the people are being paid to come to the dispensary and the children paid to come to school. That sounds like the general's idea. He's a wise man. Gradually, he'll leave off paying them when attending's a habit. People aren't avaricious. They're like children. Enormously pleased with money, but they don't really want it. He told me he was going to order them to come. You can't order these people. They don't know what an order is. Then they should learn. Why? It's good for them to do as they're told. It's discipline. We all need discipline. Why? You said it yourself. They're like children. Without discipline, we should all behave like children. Don't you like children? Well, oh, by the way, if you get a bad case at the dispensary, one that seems serious or dangerous, don't treat it. Refuse? But that would be... It would be wise. If one of your patients died, you'd have all the people up against you. Just like unreasonable children. They've never seen medicine before. They'll think it's a kind of magic. Remember, I've warned you. What is it, Sister Ruth? Oh, Sister. Sister, they brought in a woman. She was covered in blood. I've never seen such a sight. She must have cut a vein or an artery. I, I, I think it was an artery because it spurted blood. I, I had such a time stopping the bleeding. You could have fetched Sister Bryony. She would have stopped it at once. Well, I said you were to fetch me if anything came in. Well, I was only trying to consider you, Sister. Well, you might have considered the poor woman who was bleeding to death. It's all right now. I stopped the bleeding in time. Well, you better go in any case, Sister Bryony. <laughs> Shall I wait? No, we'll be along in a minute. Uh, goodbye, Sister Ruth. I hope you're patient as well. What was the woman's name? It sounded like Samuel. Uh, she's a good old lady, one of my best pluckers. I'm very grateful to you, Sister. Sister Ruth, you may go. Will you come over the building with me? If you like. If you'll take this notebook and... Write down the items. It will help you not to forget. I take it most obediently. Thank you. Come along, then. Why are they drumming, Aya? One of the general's nephews is ill. The drums are for him. They beat all night when he is ill. If you hear them stop, he's dead. You need to measure the door first. Check with Mr. Finn. Mr. Dean, uh, it's Sunday. I'm a busy man, Sister Cloda. I can't hang about waiting for this or that reason. Sunday's the day when I'm able to give most time to the work as the factory's closed. Sunday with us is a day of quiet. We find it disturbing to hear your men when we're in the chapel. If you're truly in prayer... Nothing could disturb you. We relied upon Mr. Dean. We needed him. But at the same time, he had the power to infuriate me. There was something unsettling about his presence. Mr. Dean. Sister Cloda. I want to talk to you about the holy man. The sannyasi? Well, surely he's living on our ground. He was here first. Yes, but I don't think the General should allow him to live on the land he's given to us. I should like to ask the General to turn him off. He couldn't do that. That wouldn't be polite. Oh, that's ridiculous, a dirty, ragged old man like that. I don't suppose the General knows he's there. On the contrary, he's the General's uncle. His uncle? In these parts, we're rather proud of our holy man. Once he was the Grand General Kundra Rai, with all sorts of titles and orders. Does he ever speak at all? I've never heard him. The people take him as food, but they say they don't know when he eats or sleeps. He's always in his place, under the tree, facing the Himalayas. The people come for miles to see him. I don't want to hurt their feelings, but it is our land. I can't offend the general, but at the same time, I don't quite know what to do. What would Christ have done? What? There was so much to be done, but somehow it was difficult to work, to concentrate. 
My old dreams were back. The ones I'd worked so hard to bury. And they were worse for all the years I'd pushed them away. What's wrong, Con? Ah, everything. What specially? Ah, nothing. You wouldn't understand. Is it money, Con? When isn't it? Desmond's well out of it doing wonders with Uncle Nat. He's in Michigan now, opening a new branch, and I'm stuck here. The eldest son. I'll have a little money, Con, when, when I marry. It isn't a little money the farm wants. It's a fortune. It's very quiet this evening, Aya. Where is everyone? <laughs> oh, have you been drinking again? At <laughs> the funeral feast. Lovely. I thought perhaps at the garlic you wouldn't notice. Has someone died? The general's eldest nephew. Didn't you hear the drums stop in the night? Yes. Of course, the drums were quiet last night. And two nights before that. You don't notice much, do you? He's been dead three days. The general sent us fruit and vegetables today and he didn't say anything. Why should he? It's got nothing to do with you. But it's his heir. There is a new heir now, Dilip Rai. He was nothing until this morning. He wasn't even legitimate. Now he is the young general. He's pretty, mind you, and clever. He was going to a school in England called Cambridge. But now he won't do anything of the kind. He will be put into the army and married. Shall I ring the bell for Vespers? It's past six o'clock. Oh, no. Uh, I'll ring it. Thank you, Sister Philippa. That night I had the worst dream. Sometimes it was the young general and sometimes it was Con. They had mirrors in the palms of their hands and they were talking to themselves. I was trying to attract their attention, but I couldn't. Con. And I couldn't make them listen to me either because Con. my voice was just an echo of what they were saying. Con. Good morning, Sister Ruth. Oh, Sister Philippa, I've a letter for Sister Clodagh. I was just leaving it for her. She shouldn't be long. Thank you. Superior Sister Clodagh. She's with him. Hide, hide. I brought you this girl. So I see. Her name is Kanchi. She's 17 and it's time she was married, but she's an orphan. And as you see, she's too pretty. Say salam to the Lamini, Kanchi. Salam. And why did you bring her to us? Isn't it your business to save souls? Thought you might like to try a hand at this one. You are not to speak to me like that, Mr Dean. I'm sorry. Every evening when I come home, I find Kanchi sitting on my veranda. She dresses herself up and puts flowers in her hair. It's becoming an absolute nuisance. If you could keep her here, teach her a little sense. I'll try and make her uncle arrange a marriage for her. If she's cloistered for a few months, it'll make her more desirable. She's been behaving so badly that no one wants her. That's all very well, but I don't think we want her either. Oh, I thought no one would have the patience except you. Very well. We'll try. I'll take her to Sister Bryony. We'll find her somewhere to sleep. Come along. Mm -hmm. Is someone there? Sister Ruth? I've left her with Sister Bryony. I think for the present she'd better go into the lace-making school with the other girls. I hope she'll settle down. I hope so. I mustn't keep you. I have to go and visit the general. He was very devoted to the boy who died, wasn't he? Yes. It's hard to tell with these people. They keep face so well. But he's grieving. Kundra was a fine lad. The other boy looks as if he could be fine too. Ah, he's been badly brought up. Spoiled. He was here with the brothers. They managed to make him very enthusiastic. I'm oh, sorry for the boy. He's naive and disarming. The general doesn't know how to deal with him. Couldn't the Sanyasi help? You don't understand. 
He doesn't concern himself with things like that. The fact that Kundra dies and Dilip has to go on living is nothing to do with him. You can't call that holiness. It's a different kind of holiness. It's inhuman. I think that's what he means it to be. <laughs> Thank you for taking my little love bird. You're sure there's no question you're dying to ask me? None. <laughs> then goodbye, Saint Clodagh. Saint Clodagh. I felt like I could tolerate him no longer. But it was hard to keep any resolution. The light in the evenings at that time of year reminded me of home and con. It was a dazzling light, blinding you with brilliance. I'd made up my mind I'd not talk to Mr. Dean again, but I drifted into it very easily. I forgot what had offended me. He was refreshing to talk to after the sameness of the sisters. What are those bags for? The thin one is from me for Kanchi's keep. I suppose ten rupees a month would do it, and ten for all you're teaching her. Anyhow, I've put in twelve notes to last her six months. You needn't do that. I foisted her on you, so it's my responsibility. I thankfully pay 30 rupees a month to avoid being worried by her. The other is money I've extracted from her uncle for her dowry. It's not as imposing as it looks. It's mostly four anna bits, but I want you to keep it like that for her. I'll get some more from him later. You see, if I pay her dowry, the husband would certainly think he'd been cheated. It's got to be small and authentic bits and pieces like this. Is she being a nuisance? She settled down amazingly well. She's very good. That's very good, can't she? Oh, thank you. You've dusted beautifully. Do you like it here with us? Yes, I do. I've never been so happy in all my life. Oh, well, isn't that lovely? The food is very good, and I would like to become a Christian. And after just one week, can't she? Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, isn't it? <laughs> a Christian? I'm translating the catechism for her. Let me see. Love thy neighbour as thyself. You've got that all wrong. That's not the imperative. <laughs> Are you going to translate it all? It'll take you a month of Sundays. Why do all this work for the improbable pea that is Kanchi's soul? Good God, sister, don't you know trash when you see it? No one's soul is trash. Everyone is valuable to God. I'd love to know just what he'd give for that thieving, self-seeking, shallow little opportunist. He gave himself. <sighs> Have you no sense of proportion? The people here worship the mountain. They think it concerns itself with them. They're silly, aren't they? Everyone's valuable to God. What's the use of teaching them that? What would you teach them, Mr. Dean? I wouldn't teach anyone. But if I were you, I would teach them poverty. Poverty? Yes. We're all hoping for something better, if not here, in another world. Teach us to expect nothing. To do with nothing, because that's all we'll get. Damn it all, in your churches it should be better to be poor than rich. But they seem to me as far removed from Christ's teaching as the stock exchange. Oh. In your chapel, the general ought to give way to a little coolie girl and have a seat at the back on the floor. We owe our house and dowry to the general, even our beds and food. You can't get away from the world, and it has to have some social order. Mm, that's nearly as good an argument as mine, but think of the sannyasi. Oh. All right, I'm going. Give me those papers. I know this language better than I do my own. You'd better let me do those for you. But... It's all right. I don't expect you to sympathise with my opinions any more than I do with yours. I won't put in a word of my own. It'll be done line for line as you've written it. Kanchi will be I'm very... I'm not doing it for Kanchi. Simply to stop you wasting your time. It's never a waste of time to bring a soul to God. <laughs> Good morning. I want to see the superior sister. I am the sister superior. What, what can I do for you? I am Dilip Rai, the general's nephew. I wish to be a student here with you. I want to study a lot of learning. I have heard about you, that you are all very clever. I want to study mathematics and history and poetry and languages. Uh, have you a sister to teach these things? I have a note from my uncle to you, to ask you to encourage me. Look, I'm very sorry. We only teach... Children and young girls. Why? Well, a convent doesn't take men pupils. That's not very polite to men. Well, we don't mean it like that. It's the custom. The brotherhoods are for teaching men. The convents are for teaching girls. But there aren't any brotherhoods here now. So that I think you should teach me. 
Jesus Christ was a man. He took the shape of a man. But you needn't count me as a man. I'm only interested in studious things. How can I be a student if you don't help me? Please. Yes, <sighs> I was to go to the University of Cambridge. Now that my brother is dead, my uncle says I mustn't go. I thought if I studied and learned quickly, he might change his mind and think me so clever that it would be a pity not to send me after all. How can I do that if you don't help me? I have yes, no but... one left but you. And there is something else. I have to marry and have a baby son. It is our custom that my uncle should choose a wife, but that is old fashioned and I am modern and want to choose a wife for myself. I should like to marry a girl that you have taught. And then if you teach me too, we should enjoy our culture together in our own home. I should like to marry a Bengali. I have only known one Bengali, but I think they are very intelligent, don't you? In fact, I have cut this out of the paper. Of course, it is only an idea. But would you please read it and give me your advice? Wanted for a fair complexion girl now studying BA knows music and knitting a gentleman of position apply box Do you think my ideas are any good Will you let me come Yes Yes very well You wait here I I'll inform Sister Bryony Hello? Oh! Wait! I didn't mean to startle you. Wait! Where have you gone? Oh. Yes, you're beautiful. Yes. So, you've taken on Dilip. Whose bright idea was that? He's the General's nephew. We couldn't very well refuse. You'll regret it. <laughs> but I didn't come to talk about that. I came to talk about the baby clinic. Oh, little Lum, such a beautiful baby. Isn't he, Mr Dean? It's a damn fool idea. But You'll be sorry for that as well. You see if you're not. I just wanted to do something for the children. It seems to me that Sister Honey may fill a much-needed want with this work. Remember what I told you when you opened your dispensary. Sister Bryony is a sensible woman, but Sister Honey is not I saving her presence. You know you've got no sense. <gasps> These babies are born like flies and die like flies. Their mothers think that's right and natural, but if you start monkeying about with them and then they die, you just wait and see what happens. If they're ill, she won't touch them. They'll go to Sister Bryony in the usual way. Mr. Dean, You I... must remember to go carefully, Sister. Oh, as if I would arm them. As if I would arm them when I love them so. Warm. There's a parcel for us. From Mr. Dean. Not for us. Mr. Dean knows better than to send us presents. It's for the order. That's splitting a hair. Oh, dear goodness. Look. <gasps> well, boots. Oh, just feel the warmth and the fleece and the soft Tibetan oh, boots. Oh, 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 blessing is on the poor dear man. Oh, now I shall be able to get about on my poor feet without wanting to cry at every step. Oh, I wonder if we ought to take them. These are gifts to us, not to the community. Oh, well, I don't agree at all. If you'll excuse my saying so, dear sister. Mr. Dean knows our work has been spoiled and crippled by the cold. I don't know how many things I've been forced to leave undone because of hobbling so badly on my poor feet. I shall put them on at once and thank God for Mr. Dean. <laughs> well, they don't really show under our habits. I wish we could do something for Mr. Dean. After all he's done for us. I mean, couldn't we invite him to the carol singing, sister? No, that wouldn't do at all. Sister Honey was speaking to me, not to you, Sister Ruth. Mr. Dean could certainly come to the carol singing if he likes. The service is open to anyone who cares to come. Well, we've work to do. Come along, Sister Ruth. Pick up your boots and get on. You can't spend all day staring at them. Don't you dare touch them. Don't you dare lay a finger on them. Sister Ruth. <sighs> I want to buy you a hat. Don't be silly, you can't, Con. Number six on your sheets, 
Once in Royal David City. Once in Royal That one's like a bucket. Take it away. Well, what kind of hat do you want, sir? I had in mind a very little one. Grey with something bright and soft on it, like feathers and diamonds mixed. This is for you. A brooch? It's beautiful. But you already bought me a hat, Con. Take it. It's as if you're trying to tell me something. What is it? Con? Sister Claudia, may I congratulate you on the birth of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Dylan. I was so glad to come. I heard the music and went down to ask Mr. Dean what it was, and he brought me to see. I hope you do not mind. I am very much interested in Jesus Christ. We don't usually speak of him so casually. Then you should. We want to thank you for the boots, Mr. Dean. I think we should let Sister Bryony do that, Sister Ruth. She will tell Mr. Dean far more eloquently than we can how very much we need it. I wanted to say it myself. Happy Christmas, Mr. Dean. And thank you for the holly. You have a feast to commemorate uh, Christ's death, Sister Claudia? Yes, his death and resurrection. In the history of my country, there is a superstition that if a man asks for his shoes and umbrella when he is dying, he will come back from the dead. <laughs> How dare you come here like this, Mr. Dean? It's unforgivable. <laughs> You're objectionable when you're sober and you're abominable when you're drunk. I quite agree. Good night. <laughs> I sing a maiden. Don't listen. Don't listen. I do like his voice. It's so nice and loud. I think it's lovely, don't you? Yes. Don't listen. Oh. <sighs> Aren't they hungry? I feed them from this window every morning. I've tried them with coconut, but they didn't like it. They love this mutton fat. You wanted to see me? Yes. Come sit down. I've been worried about you for some time. I feel that things are not right with you. In what way? You look so ill. You've got terribly thin. I know you're trying to keep up for all our sex, but I think you really must go in with Sister Bryony and see the doctor. I shan't see the doctor. I'm perfectly well. I'm stronger than I've ever been, and you know it, you know it, but you're trying to make out... I'm sorry, Sister, I didn't mean to be rude, but really, I'm perfectly well. I haven't been sleeping, that's all. If you haven't been sleeping, there must be some reason for it. Now, can you tell me? Is something worrying you? Yes. Yes, that's it. I, I... I am worried. I'd like you to tell me if you can. I can't speak of it to anyone. Won't you try? I'd like to help you. You know you can trust me. You didn't want me to come here. You'd use anything I told you to get me away. How can I trust you? That's absurd. I feel the same for you as for all my sisters. I think this is really to do with somebody else. I think you've let yourself fall into thinking too much of Mr. Dean. Please, answer me carefully. Why did you give that holly buttonhole to Mr. Dean on Christmas night? You must answer me. Why did you give it to him? I didn't. I think you did. I didn't. You can't make me say that I did. I, I haven't given him anything. You gave it to him outside the chapel on Christmas night. Sister, don't you realise what you're doing? But you're running the risk of losing in yourself. Sister, you must, I must, make you see before it's too late. I've noticed that you're very pleased to see him yourself. You're trying to tell me that I'm not fit to be a nun. Well, let me tell you that no more are you. <sighs> you should never have entered either, and you know it for all your honours and success. Wonderful Sister Cloda, clever Sister Cloda, and all the time you're worse than I am, and that's why you're trying to bully me. Oh. <gasps> what have I been saying? What have I said? Oh, what have, what have I been saying? If that was in your mind, it's better said. 
I think you're out of your senses. Oh, sister, I lost my temper. Forgive me. Please. Please. <laughs> Listen to me. I don't know. I can't decide now what to make of you. I shall have to think, and I want you to think if there's any way that you feel you can be helped. Try and take more time every day for prayer. Would you like to write to Reverend Mother? At least you must feel with her that she has no personal feelings against you. As for Mr. Dean, you must take him for what he is and not try to glorify him into something he's not. When he speaks to you, he has a way of making you think he's interested in you. But really, that's only his manner. He doesn't really mean it. When he came to the chapel on Christmas night, he was drunk. May... May I go? Go into the chapel. You can use my private door. No one will see you. Oh. I should have acted then, but I didn't. I waited, and the days slipped by. I seemed to notice less, not more. And I accepted my dreams more readily. There was something unreal about Mopu, and it affected us all. I'm going to have the rose beds right here, Sister Clodagh. What rose beds? I'm going to make some. The roses in the catalogues have such gorgeous names. Lady Hillingdon, Golden Dawn, Shot Silk. They have to be dug down three feet, you see. We shall need extra labour for that. Then I have to mulch the rhododendrons before they come into flower. And I want to put in some red and white splendours. I've told Nima to get me two coolies for that. I can't spare the regular ones. It's my idea to turn the present vegetable terraces over to flowers. Sister, all this would take months. Not if I can get enough labour. I can get any amount of coolies from Mr. Dean. But think of the cost. The seeds alone are beyond any allowance we can possibly expect. Half the things on this list wouldn't grow here anyway. We're too high for them. I think we should try. We can't afford to try. I'm sorry, sister, this is impossible. It's the very least I can manage with. I don't know what's come over you, sister. You bring me these schemes which would cost hundreds of rupees in labour and plants, and you know perfectly well that there's no hope of my agreeing. Your clothes are untidy and... Lately you've been unpunctual and you've been neglecting your other work. Why is that? It interrupts. Does this mean I can have none of this for the garden? Go and consult Nima. You know what you can spend. Think it over. Bell is late again. Late again. Not my fault I'm so tired all the time, I forget. It's not my fault if I'm tired. I have to keep watching for them. I can't sleep. My eyes feel stretched with watching, but I have to watch. What's inside me is alive, it's real. It's so alive it frightens me, but it's a joy too. Filled with him, Mr. Dean. Steady, steady. Don't let them see. Think of a plan. Sister Ruth, I am ready to start work. What are you wearing? A nechkin of corded white silk, buttoned in balls of gold with gold scrolls at the collar. I mean the scent. I can smell it from here. <sighs> Black Narcissus. I got it from the army and navy stores. Do you like it? Black Narcissus. That's perfect. The name suits you. Don't you think it's rather common to smell of ourselves? To tell you the truth... I've been trying to improve myself. Not for Kanchi's sake, I hope. Have you noticed any difference in me over the last few days, Sister Ruth? I've noticed that you're not getting on very fast with your French. Now, General Dillip, write out from memory the present indicative of the verb aller, to go. You are much stricter than Sister Cloda. Sister Cloda is in a dream most of the time. Con, won't you ever finish? 
Pat's had the boat waiting for the last hour. Lord, girl, can't a man write a letter in peace? Who are you writing to, Con? Uncle Nat. As soon as the old man dies, Chloe, I'm going to clear out to Uncle Nat. Ah, it isn't the life for a man here. The rot's in and the land's gone to weed. I won't kill myself over it like the old man. Ah, what do I care if the land's been ours for a thousand years when it isn't worth a halfpenny now? But, Con, you know you're proud of it and love it. Love it. If I could, I'd never see this place again. I think of all there is to do in the world. Sometimes I can't wait for it all. Don't you itch to get away? I don't want to go away. I want to stay here like this for the rest of my life. I hope you're pleased, Father Roberts. Yes, it all seems excellent, very excellent. Yes, it certainly seems that. But is anything worrying you, sister? Why do you ask that? I don't know, but you seem changed. Yes, all of you, except my good friend, Sister Brownie, and she's always the same. In what way are we changed? I, I don't know. I, I can't quite say. I've noticed it with each one of you. Do you know, in the chapel this morning, I suddenly had the feeling I was alone, that not one of you was listening to me. Father... If this place is too much for you, you will say so. But, Father, I, I don't understand. I thought we'd made such progress here that you'd be so pleased. It's difficult to explain. Today, somehow, I felt I had lost you. You're none of you as single-hearted as you were. <laughs> These are the plans. It's our idea that the chapel should face onto an enclosed garden. It will give us quiet and seclusion. Rectangular pointed roof, I know the type. Where will you get the glass? Oh, it gets sent out to us. Do they pick it up at Woolworths? Sixpence a pane. Mr Dean, will you help us or not help us? This means a very great deal to us. I can't hear you talk about it like that, whatever you may think. Sister, do you like this chapel? Oh, well, it's not of a course we like it. Well, even to look at it makes us homesick for our dear mother house. I suppose it isn't a very beautiful design. But I don't see why you should mind that. He's talking beauty. It's the whole idea that's wrong. I haven't many principles, sister, but I don't want to build a chapel like this. Give me a day and I'll show you what I mean. Give me the plans. I'll take care of them, I promise. But give me an idea of what a chapel shouldn't look like. I'll be back tomorrow. What an extraordinary man. He didn't have to be so rude. He wasn't being rude. He was being serious. I've got it. This is the chapel you should let me build for you. But it isn't a chapel at all. It's a temple. Of course it is. This is the East. You're dealing with an Eastern people. Christ himself was an Eastern Jew. Now listen... It should be built where the path comes out of the forest, under the hill, just above the Sanyasi shrine. Oh, no, not near that shrine. Yes, he's taken very nearly the best place, but not quite the best. Just above him is the highest place of all, the best place to see the snows. It'll be made so that the path comes right through it, and the people are coming and going through it all day long. The people coming and going all day long. What an extraordinary idea. Yes, but there it would be above everything, above the clouds and the trees, the highest point of all. You'd always have to go up to it. You see, these are not exactly walls and not exactly pillars. They're placed across the corners to break the wind and give shelter. Between them, the clouds will show, and on fine days, the snow. On the floor, you should put straw. Here's your altar. In the shadow of this pillar, I've made it a rock, like Peter, and the mica will shine and remind you how his faith shone in his strength. Your lamp and flowers will be safe there from the wind. From outside at night, the lamp will look like a lighthouse in the dark, and from inside you'll see stars in all four spaces. Look, your bell is under the dome. It'll sound deep and rounded there, not like the silly clapper you have here. The birds will nest there, as a matter of fact, and though that sounds nice, it'll be a damn nuisance because you'll have to keep changing your straw. You can console yourself with thinking that it's a chapel not only for you, but for all life. All life, which is God. Oh. Oh, that's beautiful. It's more than beautiful. It's holy. 
Oh, Mr. Dean, that's the chapel you should build for us here. Thank you, Sister Ruth. I didn't see you come in. Please give me the letters and go back to work. Sister, did you hear me? I suppose you're not going to build it. You're going to miss a chance like this of making something beautiful and fitting just because it's something new, something you haven't thought of yourself. Oh, sister, you can't let it go. I don't think we asked for your advice. This has nothing to do with you. Isn't it? I'm as much a part of this order as you are. It's my chapel as much as yours, and I tell you, it must be built. I'll write to Reverend Mother myself. I'll fight you with every breath in my body. Sister, control yourself. Remember where you are, who you're talking to. I must apologise, Mr Dean, for such an exhibition of hysteria. You! You! Oh, 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 back! The paperweight! Oh, 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 oh. No, Sister Ruth. Give that to me. Sister. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dean. They say your bark is worse than your bite. All the same, I think it must be a pretty nasty bite. You speak in a very uncharitable way, almost like one of us heathen. As you don't like my plan, give it back to me. Why? Are you angry about that? Oh, don't be foolish. I do like it, but you must see that it isn't a chapel. It's what a chapel should be. I didn't think of it myself. I read through Matthew, Mark, Luke and John to find out for myself what Christ would have thought of your closed door. A chapel shouldn't be sacred, but as free and useful as the path I put it on. I don't expect you to understand me any more than I can understand you. But I respect you. That's the difference between us. I'll build you any sort of chapel that seems best. Come on. At least stick to your guns. Sister Philippa, I expected to find you in the garden, not the laundry. We're behindhand again. Still, can you spare a few minutes all the same? The general has sent some cherry trees to try in the orchard. Come and look at them. They look like dead sticks, all the roots twisted up. Do you think you'll know what to do with them? No, I don't. Sister, what is it? What's happened? I was going to ask if I might speak with you. Tell me, what's wrong? Oh, there's nothing wrong, sister. I want to be transferred... Transfer? Yes. I want you, if you will, to apply for my transfer at once, if you will, at once. But why? I was becoming too fond of the place. I was too wrapped up in my work. I had forgotten. Forgotten what? What I am. You mean... Yes, I'm a religious. I had forgotten that. I was putting my work before my religious life. I was losing sight of God in it. Losing the spirit of the order. I've been thinking it over, you see, and I must go at once. I don't see that. Now that you know and you've realised the danger, you needn't go. I daren't stay. Mopu had run away with me. I was obsessed with it and the mountain and my work in the garden. Yes, really obsessed. There's something in this place. I don't trust myself here. I think I understand. I think there are only two ways to live in this place. Either like Mr. Dean or the Sanyasi. Either ignore it altogether or give yourself up to it. Which is which? Neither would do for us. No. That's why we oughtn't to be here. Well, we are here. And I don't think running away will help matters. You know, if I ask for you to be transferred, it will be a black mark against you. That's all the better. That's what I need. Wise Sister Philippa. What had I been thinking of all those months? The work had gone on, but I hardly knew when or how. And all the time there was Sister Philippa, obsessed with the garden. Sister Honey with her eyes greedy for the children. And then Sister Ruth. I should have been anxious about Sister Ruth, and yet I was hardly thinking about her at all. I decided 
to press down harder than ever. Eat your supper now, Joseph. You should rice and beans and lentils and lentils and beans and rice. It's Lent, Joseph, that's why. What's that? That's our new sister, Joseph. Sister Adam. Why is she walking on sticks? She's very tall, that's all. She's come to replace Sister Philippa. Tony Pedlamini. More lentils, sister. Oh, that's very kind. If only we could get some fish. <laughs> Nonsense. We should eat what we can and be thankful. This is a convent you're catering for, not a hotel. Yes, sister. I don't know what's come over, Sister Claudia. These last days she's changed completely. She's a bully. Don't you let me hear you talk like that. Anyone else would have sent you packing long ago. I advised her to myself. You ought to be too ashamed to speak the way you disgraced yourself and all of us in front of Mr. Dean. I called her a bully and I mean it. We have enough to bear out here without making it worse. Making us get up an hour earlier and cutting down on food. It's only for Lent. She has a good reason for everything. That's why she's the youngest sister superior in the order. Sister superior, very superior indeed. You should see how Om's little brother's improving. He hasn't a single sore left. No, His eyes are so small, they disappear into fat when he's smiling. <laughs> <laughs> he knows me. Oh, what darlings these babies are. All right. He always tries to catch my <laughs> finger. I, I, I couldn't love him more if he were mine. <laughs> Don't let me hear you talk like that again. You're getting entirely too sentimental over these babies. You'll have to control yourself, sister, or I shall have to stop them coming here. Yes, sister. When I arrived here yesterday, I was offered a meat pie. A meat pie during Lent. That would never have happened in China. The order there was fastidious on such points. I'm glad you've come, Sister Adela. I think we need you here. What are you doing here? Mm. You can't come in here. These are our private quarters. Ah, you're the new sister. How do you do? Mr. Dean, you'll get used to me in time. I'm not prying. I've come to mend a loose joint in your pipe. My pipe? What pipe? The lavatory pipe. You must send a workman. Uh, the mystery can't deal with it. He's tried. I count plumbing of sorts amongst my various gifts, and I swear to you, sister, it's only the pipe that I'm interested in. Well, this is something I've never heard of. Thank you, sister. Never, ever. Oh. Oh, dear. Not used to the altitude yet. Don't you think no. she's awfully pretty? Oh, the statue of St. Elizabeth. What are you doing here? I always sit behind this screen. At present, I'm doing the verb sasua, to seat oneself. But tomorrow, I'm going to read a child's easy book called Les Malheurs de Sophie. Do you know it? Can you read French? I want... Are you a sister or a mother? Oh, I do so want to meet a mother. Who are you? I am General Dilip Rai. How do you do? General. And what have you done to be made a general? Nothing. It was my brother. What did he do? He died. What did he do to be made a general in the first place? He was born. I would have been one too, but my father wasn't sure if I was legitimate. Now it has been proven that I am, I'm allowed to be a general as my brother was. I'm to inherit from my uncle, which is why I'm so busy with my education. I suppose you are a Christian. I'm not a Christian out loud. My uncle wouldn't let me change my religion. The religion of your country is, in reality, animism. Is it? Hmm? How do you spell that? What is it? It's a form of pantheism. Pantheism. Mm. And how do you spell that? And what is it? <laughs> Saying that God is in everything. In trees and stones and streams. That sounds very beautiful. But it certainly isn't true. Why are you so sure? Because we can cut down the forest and dam the stream and break up the stones, but we can't conquer God. But he might well be in the mountain. No one can conquer that mountain and no one ever will. Men can't conquer God. They only go mad for the love of him. You have to be very strong to live close to God or a mountain, or you'll turn a little mad. The strongest of all is my great uncle, the sannyasi. He makes himself strong inside, and he can look at the mountain all day. <laughs> and who is that? Only Kanchi. She often passes by here to see me. She's very pretty, isn't she? 
But she's always bothering me to talk to her. <sighs> well, would you look at that? The time. I've been talking to you for a good deal too long. Sister. Mr. Dean. I was just watching the sannyasi. When I passed him just now, my shadow ran over him. He didn't blink. How does he sit there, just looking at the wind? It looks like he's left his body, sitting there comfortably on the deer skin, and gone off. Will you tell Sister Adler that if I go into the chapel to look at the statues, I won't contaminate them. I only want to measure them for their niches. What's wrong with you? You look starved. <laughs> uh, here, have my handkerchief. It's quite clean. Don't you think you could tell me what it is? Ever since we came here, over all our problems, it's been ask, Mr. Dean. Well, that's because there wasn't anyone else here you could ask. And I had to have the young general here and away, didn't I? And I couldn't turn the sannyasi out. Everything I did, I was more or less forced to do, wasn't I? Just what are you talking about? Mr. Dean, do you think we've changed very much? Do you notice a change in us since we came here? In what way? Father Roberts said we were not as single-hearted. I didn't take much notice then, but when Sister Philippa came and asked to be transferred, it gave me a shock. She asked? Yes, and she gave that as a reason that she was getting obsessed with the garden. Sister Adela thinks we're all strange, and... What with what Father Robert said. I'm watching them all and I, I can't make up my mind. Is it my imagination or not? T tell me truthfully, Mr. Dean. Has Sister Ruth ever tried to speak to you? I keep out of her way. Have, have you ever noticed Sister Honey with the children? Uh, and I? Am I very different? Yes. You're much nicer. How? You're human. Before, you were inhuman, much too invulnerable. Now, you're not. You can feel. I can feel. Oh, yes. We're none of us strong enough, are we? We feel. When I, I was a girl, I, I loved a man. We were... Children together in Ireland, where I come from, a little place called Linus Kelly. I thought, or everyone thought, we would marry. But he was ambitious, and I found out that he was going to America to his uncle. And he didn't mean to take me with him. He didn't think he was doing anything wrong. I don't think he ever thought of marrying me. But in a little place like that... And I had shown that I loved him. I had to get away first. You see, everyone knew they were, they were waiting for the announcement. They talked about it to me, and I was so sure. It doesn't sound much, but it was to me. So I did it first. It's a strange way of bringing me in. But God works in strange ways. This life came to mean everything to me. And I thought I'd forgotten the past until we came here. The first day I came, I thought about him. And the young general reminds me of him too. I've been drifting and dreaming. And now I seem to have come to the struggle and the bitterness again. Then I think you should go away at once. Run away? Like Sister Philippa? Yes, if you've got any sense. And abandon all this work, like the brothers? Yes. I told you that this was no place for a nunnery. There's something in it that makes everything exaggerated. You should go and take them all with you before anything happens. I don't know why I told you, but I'm glad I did. When it's out, it's nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing has happened. Why should it? Thank you, <clears throat> Mr. Dean. You've made me feel much better. Well, I didn't mean to, you daft, pig-headed woman. <sighs> All right. Watch. Be on your guard. Watch yourself first, Mike. 
and see how much time that leaves for Sister Ruth, Canchi, and the others. You can't afford to trust me a yard. I'll not help you. I give you till the rains break. Where's that confounded pony? Fuma! Fuma! Goodbye. Much better. Sister Cloda, I want you to consult you. I wrote for this, this catalogue. Oh. I was thinking that as I am planning to go to England, that it would be very polite of me to wear English clothes. <sighs> Sister Cloda, why are they called plus fours? We must get on with your lesson, General. Is it some sort of mathematical measurement? You see what it says? A very gentleman-like suit. Highly recommended, double-breasted, pinstriped, in a nice quality material that hangs well. That sounds nice, doesn't it? Sister Cloda, what does it mean? A pinstripe is a very narrow stripe and hangs well means it fits well. Shall I have to wear braces? Not if you don't want to. But I want to. And I must have some underclothes. It says, Viella is best for underwear. What is Viella, sister? You mustn't ask these questions. Uh, is Viella not a proper subject? I am sorry. No, no, Viella is only a kind of flannel, but we are not suitable people to advise you on your clothes. But who is to help me if you won't? I was depending on you. I have ordered a box of shirts and underwear to be sent here on approval to you. You ordered them sent here? Yes. I thought we could have such fun choosing them. General, I can't let you talk so much. Please let me talk to you. There are so many things besides lessons I need to know about so that I can go away. Oh, I so want to go away. Do you know how to play golf, sister? Yes. But that was a long time ago. You're getting so good, Chloe, you'll have to give me lessons. You're not still angry with me, are you? You can't walk home from here. It's too far. Get in the car. I'd rather walk. Ah, uh, walk then. And when you're tired, don't sit crying by the road, because I'll not come for you. Uh, I'm sorry, Chloe. Forgive me. Forgive me. The only thing is, it's very hard to learn golf from a book, isn't it, sister? General, will you go now? And remember, when you come again, I, I can't allow you to talk so much, or I'll have to stop your lessons. Why are you angry? Don't you like me to come here? You please go. I'm sorry. Forgive me. <laughs> Aya, I've come for my pony. <laughs> what is this? It's Kanchi. I'm going to beat her. <laughs> what has the girl done? She's a thief. She stole a brass vase from the church room. It wasn't worth two annas, mind you. I hid it in a skirt where I heard it go jingle jangle against her keys. When she cries, they let her off. But this is my affair. She can cry all she likes. And they won't hear her. I brought her down here and whipped her without asking. Once for stealing and twice for the silly way she did it. You finish the beating, General. I have to take the Sister Sahib's tea. Finish the beating as you like. And begin to be a man. <laughs> get up. Your hair is getting dusty. I can't get up. Let go. Let go of me. Let go. Get up. Go into the stable. I'll follow. Then people started to leave us, one by one. Kanshi ran away, and the general didn't come back for his lessons. Perhaps it was wrong of me to have them at St. Faith's together. But there were worse days to come. Days that put Kanshi and the young general far from my mind. Lamini? What is it, Aya? A sick woman has come in with a baby. The smiling Lamini has sent me to fetch you. Sister Honey? What, is the baby ill, then? Lamini, the baby is ill. Don't let the sister take off his clothes and put him on the scales, or she will kill him, I'm sure. Quickly. What is it, sister? It's Om's little brother. He doesn't seem very well. 
Oh, he's not moved? No. Do you think he's got a pain, or do you think it's wind? Give me my thermometer. Here. How long has he been like this? Uh, his mother says three or four days. Today she couldn't wake him. Uh, uh. His eyes seem to hurt, and he doesn't like the light, but... Well, he's not fretful, is he? I don't think he's got a fever. A hundred and three. But that's not much in a baby, is it? I mean, they go up and down easily, don't they? How long has he lain like this? Since this morning. Tell the mother to take him home and put him to bed and let him sleep. Aren't you going to give him anything? Sister, aren't you going to do anything for him? There's nothing I can do. What do you mean? He can't be very bad. He's very bad. I can't help him. I daren't try. You mean he might die? There must be something you can do. You can't risk letting that lovely baby die without raising a finger. I told you, I daren't touch him. You're afraid of getting into trouble and so you'll let him die. You'll stand by and let him die. Let him sleep. Then God in heaven be your judge. The children are very late this morning, Joseph. Poor Ash, they think it's a holiday. Oh, how could they think it's a holiday when they've just finished their holidays, you silly little boy? Go up to the path and see if they're coming and tell them to hurry up. I don't want to. How dare you answer me like that? Go at once! I won't go. Ah, oh, let go! Tell me what you mean! Me. Oh. Tell me what you mean! Oh. Whatever are you doing to Joseph? Why, Joseph? What's the matter? Hmm? Oh, well, haven't the children come? I wonder why. Joseph knows. Joseph, you must tell us, please. Joseph, dear. Tell us! Mom's brother is dead. He died in the night and they say the smiling Lamini killed him. Oh, no. The whole village is saying that you killed the baby. Oh, but I didn't. I didn't. I just gave her something to wash his eyes. I, I had to do it. I had to. He, he was such a darling. Such a darling. <laughs> Do you think it's serious? Very serious. The agent before my day was riding his pony down to the factory one day and he let it kick an umbrella that was open on the path over the edge. There was a baby asleep under it and the baby was killed. Oh. It was an accident, but they murdered him that night. No. I'm not trying to frighten you, Sister Honey. I'm trying to make you see that it may be serious. Nothing of the kind is likely to happen to you. But you'll find the people will be sullen for a while. I'll go to the village and talk to everyone. Please. Meanwhile, you must none of you go out of the garden, but try to go about as if nothing has happened. Mm -hmm. I saw the woman that Sister Honey gave the bottle to, and I drank it. You drank it? <laughs> it was only brassic and water. I wanted to show them I wouldn't drop dead. Well, you're lucky it wasn't castor oil. That's what she usually gives the babies. <laughs> Mr. Dean will begin to think this is an asylum, not a convent, Sister Ruth. We're very grateful, Mr. Dean. But I think I'm right in saying we're not afraid. Am I right? Yes, Sister. Yes, yes Sister. Yes. so quiet, isn't it? Well, we can think of it as a holiday. Mm. Could you pass the bread, please, Sister Adela? Oh, certainly. Yes. Three days and not a soul. I can't bear it. I can't bear it. I couldn't let him die without trying to yeah, help him. Just... I loved him so. There, there, sister. <laughs> I've had enough of this. I can't stand any more. What's she crying for, I'd like to know? Sister. Not for what she's done, but for a little black brat of a baby that's not even her own. That's Please, why she's sister. crying, only she hasn't the courage to say so. Because all the time she's been pining and longing for a baby of her own. Yes, she wants to have a baby of her own. She won't say so. She's afraid to say it. She's afraid, and you're afraid, Sister Cloda. What? You're more afraid than anyone. You're afraid we all know why you always have consultations alone in the office and why you're always visiting Sister, the buildings. You're afraid we'll find out. And that's why you hide it. But I know. Yes, I know. And I'll tell you something else. It isn't you he likes. 
It's me. Yes, oh, sister. That... Me. That's why you bully me. That's why you make them watch me. Oh, yes, you're oh, clever, no. very clever, but I'm not afraid of you. Not if you starve me and poison me and shut me up. I'm still not afraid. He'll help me. I'll tell him all about you. I'll tell him what you do to me and he'll be very angry, so take care. Sister. Don't move. Sit still. Go on eating. And don't look at her. Let her go, Sister Adela. Don't touch her. It's over now. Yes. Um, oh. We must leave her alone for a little, and uh, presently when she's calm, I'll go out and talk to her. Yes. She must be sent away. Dear, what a week we're having. Oh. Sister Ruth. I thought I'd find you here. Steady. Steady. You've done it once. You mustn't do it again. Be careful. Be steady. Don't think about them. They've been cutting the bamboos. Oh, so they have. The white spikes look like swords. Yes, don't they? Why does doing nothing make you feel so tired? Do you feel tired? <gasps> oh, you shouldn't do in this beautiful air. I feel as if I'd been beaten all over. You do look a little bit tired. Would you like me to get permission for you to lie down? It's my head that's so bad. It isn't as if there were any work for us to do, is it? Come on. I'll help you into bed. Thank you, sister. The Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. What is it, Aya? Where's Sister Ruth? Why have you left her bedside? Well, I came to tell you, Lamini, she's gone out. Gone out? Aya, why didn't you stop her? You should never stop mad people doing anything. She might hurt herself. If she's really mad, that won't matter. And if she's not really mad, she'll look after herself. Do you mean you just sat there and let her go? She was sound asleep. I touched her toe and she didn't move. I gave it a good jerk and she still didn't move. So I went down for tea. What time was this? Three o'clock. She may well have been gone over three hours. Ring the bell. Steady. Steady, go quietly. Sister, what are you doing here? I came to find you. Then you can think again. You're not going to leave me like this. You're not going to go away. I, I want to talk to you just for a little while. Let go of my hand. Mm. Sister, what are you mm. doing? Stop it! Mm. How can you behave like this? I can't help it. I came on purpose to find you. I can't stand <sighs> it any longer. I love you. I want to be with you always. Sister, you're a nun. You can't behave in this shocking way. It isn't shocking. How could it be? I love you and you'll help me and take me away. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? No, I'm not because I can't help it. Nothing else matters uh, to me now. You'd better walk up to the convent with me. I won't. Then I shall leave you here by yourself. You can't. It wouldn't be safe. Do you think I care what happens to you? All the same, you wouldn't leave me here. Let's talk it over, sister. You know this isn't like you. You've forgotten who you are. You're a nun. What makes you think a nun can't love? But you can't love me. It's ridiculous. I've loved you ever since the first time I saw you. It's not your fault. You've never taken any notice of me. Once or twice you've spoken to me, that's all. And this is the hand you held when you thought I was going to hurt Sister Cloda. You hurt my hand, but I liked it to hurt. I've loved you ever since I came to Mopu. Oh. Are you sorry you came? I wouldn't want to live if I went away from here. They'll send me away. 
Uh, of course they will after this. They'll send me away at once. Don't tell them where I am. You mustn't let them get me. I can't stop them. You must. You must take me away. I can't. You don't know what they are. <sighs> they watch me. She told them to watch me. She gave orders. She thinks I'm mad. She and Sister Bryony were whispering. They spy on me. They whisper, whisper, whisper about me. She... Today they sent Aya to spy on me, but I got away. I'm so strong, you see. I can do anything. Soon they'll come after me. She'll find out and come. I'll tell you why. She's jealous. She's jealous of you and me. She's mad. Quite mad, and she knows that I know. She wants me to go mad. My dear, my dear, be quiet. It isn't like that. You know it isn't. It is! Oh, take me away. I can't. You say that because you love Sister Cloda. Of course I don't. I don't love anybody. I don't love Sister Cloda, and she doesn't love me. She never would. She never could. I like her and admire her in a way. She makes me very angry sometimes. I like to talk to her. That's all there is to it with either of us. Then why can't you take me away? Because I couldn't think of such a thing. And I don't love you either. Why don't you like me? I do like you. I like you, and I'm very sorry for you. Take me, then. You needn't love me if only I can be with you. You no, know I can't. What's to become of me, then? You must let me take you back. Never. They're trying to poison me. Do you wonder I'm afraid? I can't sleep at night because she comes and stands by my bed. So do you know what I do? I go and stand by hers, right over her while she's asleep to see if she's afraid. She's Steady. trying to... Steady. But that's what I say to myself. Of course it is. You understand. Of course. You go back up, and I'll come up with you and explain everything to Sister Cloda. You'll take me away? Promise? With you? I promise I'll get you away. You're only saying it. I'll come up with you, Sister, and explain. No. No, no, let me go alone. I... Oh, I need a drink. Christ, I need a drink. Sister bloody Cloda! Aya, you're not to say a word of this to the other servants. Oh, no, I'll keep it absolutely secret. And anyway, they already know. Oh, to think this had to happen now, on top of everything else. You don't think she could have gone after Mr. Dean? She was in the mood to do anything. We mustn't forget she's mad. She doesn't know what she's doing. Will you go across to Mr. Dean's bungalow? Alone? Well, you can take Aya. Dear goodness, if she's there, what am I to do? He'll help you, I'm sure. He's got no love for Sister Ruth. He's got a terrible reputation. Oh, but I suppose he's never shown it to us, though, has he? I'll get men and lights and search by the river. Well, if she's fallen into the river, we'll never get her. The currents will sweep her under and hold her for days. Oh, let's get it over with. <gasps> Hurry, sister! Sister Ruth! Sister Ruth! Who's there? Anything, Sister Riley? Nothing. I think he was drunk, Sister. He had whiskey, and there was a horrible smell of it, and he looked so funny. She wasn't there, and he wouldn't say if he'd seen her. Oh. He, he offered me a drink. He told me to go ahead and look. I said if he was a gentleman, he'd help me look, and I can't tell you what he said then. Never in all my days, sister. I'll bring you a tray of food. Now you should rest, Sister Bryony. We'll talk in a few hours. I'll go and ring the Angelus.
When I looked down over the parapet, she'd fallen where they were cutting bamboos. Her hand and veil were flung curiously sideways. A spike had driven through her chest and was holding her up while her head hung down. When they reached her, she was dead. Dear Reverend Mother Dorothea, I have had to write and tell you the whole sad story. I blame myself. When I first came here, I drifted and dreamed my old dreams of corn. Then I struggled against them with an intensity and agony. Now all that has fallen away. I feel like a newborn child, helpless, vulnerable. I don't know who I am. I'm not Sister Cloda any longer. Sister Cloda, this is the first letter I have ever had from you that pleased me, in spite of the terrible news it brought. In it I seemed to find a new Cloda, one whom I had long prayed to meet. We've had a letter from Reverend Mother, Aya. We will be leaving Mopu. You want us to go, don't you? Yes and no. I thought I would be glad and so I am. I hoped you'd go and quickly too. Now I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry, but I'll soon get over it. I'm sure you will. You'll forget all about us. If anyone speaks of us, you'll wonder who we were. You don't remember things for long here, do you? Why should we... Soon the rains will come and ruin the garden. Wipe away all traces of us. Aya? The young general is here. Sister, I have just heard the news about Sister Ruth. I am most bitterly sorry. Thank you. Is there anything else? You're angry with me. Please don't be angry. General, I'm tired and very distressed. You haven't been near us for a week. You never even sent word that you weren't taking your lessons. I came at once when I heard the news because it reminded me of you. Sister, I have done a very wrong thing, but I didn't mean to. I don't mean to do anything wrong again. I'm going to give up being clever and famous. I'm going to be exactly like my ancestors. Modest, brave and polite. And they never did anything cheating. Which is why I have to tell you what I've done. Sister Cloda, I have had Kanchi for a week. Well, oh. eight days exactly. And as I don't want to do any cheating, I have brought her back to you to ask if I may have her for always. Isn't it rather late now? Well, yes, it is rather. I know it would have been more polite to ask first, but I took her before I had time to think of that. It seems to be settled already. You must see Mr. Dean. He's responsible for her. I have her dowry here. Oh, so... I'm not going to marry her. My uncle would never allow it. I want her as my concubine. Oh. My ancestors all had concubines. And when I marry, I shall not see my wife much. And she will be very sympathetic. Well, goodbye, Sister Cloda. And thank you. Goodbye. So... You're going. What will they do with you? I'll be sent to another convent with less responsibility. I'll be superseded as sister in charge. Will you be able to stomach that? A stiff-necked, obstinate creature like you? I'm sorry. I shouldn't have reminded you of that just now. It's what I need. Still, I'll have my ghosts to remind me. I honestly thought she was going back. I watched her right up the hill. Oh, I know. I know. Should I have done more? Oh, if only we could go now. We're waiting for the general. To run away without saying goodbye would be cowardly. He'll be here. There's one thing. I know it's a thing you'd rather not do. I'll do it. Will you take care of the grave? I'll try. 
Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Dean. Your Excellency, I should like to tell you how sorry I am. I feel we failed you in every way. You must not blame yourself for it. It was too much for you. It is too much for everyone. Though I don't understand why. I've always been very bothered over this house and I've always wanted to put it right. Why is it so important to me? Can you tell me that? <laughs> it's something that won't come right for me, Sister Cloda. It was right for my father and uh, he would have chuckled to think it bothered me. You really have to go? I'm sorry, General. Is it uh, because of the young sister that died? It's not only that. What then? <sighs> the brothers would not tell me either. Is this the same place we rested in before when we came, do you think? It looks exactly the same. Joseph cried so hard when we left. I cried too. I couldn't help myself. Who will see to Sister Ruth's grave when we're gone? Oh, Mr. Dean will. I wish we could have seen the snows. They should have shown themselves for us this last time. Just think. It's a year since we came. Sister, you're not going to cry again. <laughs> it's just... When I close my eyes, I can see the children. Almost hear them calling me, Come to me, me, come. Their little hands pulling me. Oh, have your tea. <laughs> what a ridiculous idea to have cups with no handles. They're meant for wine. Oh. oh. The tea's quite good. It was kind of the general to send it. Mm -hmm. Particularly when you think of the money he's wasted on us. Oh, dear goodness, we must hurry. That's the rain. The house will be empty now. Silent, except for the creaking and straining in the wind. Aya can bawl as loudly as she wants from the kitchen and enter any room without knocking. The children will forget they'd ever been to school except in some dark dream at the bottom of their minds. In the village, they'll be glad, and their little lives will close over them. Mr. Dean brought us Kanchi, little, ripe, sly Kanchi. Mr. Dean had a feather in his hat the colour of yellow butterflies. That was the first time I saw him, sitting on the veranda with his dogs, his cockatoos, his monkey. Blue eyes, chestnut hair, charming face. All the trite phrases fit him. His skin was brown and smooth, and his lips red like the Irish children I used to play with long ago. That was when the first thought of Ireland came to me. From Mr. Dean. In Black Narcissus by Ruma Godden, Sister Cloda was played by Sinead Kuzak, Mr. Dean by David Rintoul, and Sister Ruth by Leslie Sharp. Dilip Rye was Ronnie Jutti, Sister Bryony, Susan Engel, Sister Philippa, Jenny Lee, and Sister Honey, Rachel Atkins. Aya was played by Indira Joshi, Sister Adela by Carolyn Jones, Joseph Anthony by Diraj Prasai, the General by Sam Dastor, Kanchi by Sumitra Bhagat, and Khan by Alastair Danson. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The music was specially composed by Elizabeth Parker. Black Narcissus was dramatized for radio by April De Angelis and directed by Sally Avons.